it's a happy new year here from Paul. We've just set up our new technology and just wanted to show you what we're doing going forward for 2021. I'm here with my son Adam, uh, who's our, our IT family, family expert, expert. and uh, he's, he's very kindly showed me how to double screen everything and record what we're doing so I can move in and out of various websites and we can have a look at some of the genetics on ball pythons. So you see on the screen at the moment, I've just taken us to the world of ball pythons. So, and it's got on there various options, and as you can see up here, um, you've got the uh, morph lists. Um, genetic wizard is the one that we're interested in because we want to play around with um, percentages on genetics. So let's just click on that and see where it takes us. And you'll see that we can now put in the male and female version of our snakes. So why don't we go in and say an albino, for example. Let's say we've got an albino that's het for clown. And you can put in het clown as the male. Should receive that. And then on the other side, let's say we had a clown and we had that het for albino. Actually, I think you go press return as a clown. Then you go return, then you go het albino. Click that. And then you calculate. And you'll see that working now on the demonstration. And below us should give us um, a picture of a male albino clown, which it has. And then below that, we should start to get some percentages. And as you can see, there's 25% chance of getting an albino clown, which is one of these beautiful animals here, you can see. So it even gives you a, a picture of what you're shooting for. You can also get 25% of your offspring will be albino het for clown. And then 25% will be clowns, and then 25% will be double hecked albino clowns. So there's a straightforward example of using the genetic calculator. What do you think of that, Adam? Yeah, it's impressive. It's good, isn't it? Yeah. Now, the other thing you can do is you can change these about. So let's say, for example, I've just, Jazz just bought me for Christmas, and I want to see the percentages. He's given me a het clown and a het VPI exantic. So we'll just type that in. And let's see if I've got my spellings right. Will it take that? No results found. So I wonder if it's a het exantic. Exantic VPI maybe at the end. See if it accepts that. Didn't like that. So let's just put an exantic, a VPI exantic on exantic VPI. Doesn't like that either. So doing something wrong here, Adam. Let's try I'm scrolling through them. Should go through the it. should go through the see um Well there we go, there's the Exantics. So we've got the VPI line, but I want to go for het. So do I put het in front of that? Um I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll we'll just go for um let's do clown and then let's do exantic. VPI line. Let's say I've got that, which I haven't got, but let's see what that does for us. So look how beautiful they look, the exantic clowns, aren't they gorgeous, Jack Adam? Mm -hmm. Beautiful animals. So the let's say I had an exantic VPI that was het for clown, and then I had an exantic VPI that was a clown. Let's see what that would produce for us. So 50% would be exantic VPI het clowns, and 50% would be VPI exantic clowns on that model. So if I had a het here, I'm just wondering how I can do that now. There must be an option for us to to be able to change that. Let's put het in front of that and see whether that works. Um, so let's get rid of that. Let's go het exantic VPI. There we go. It is there. And then we can do the same over here as well. So it is a question of playing around to get what you need. And it comes with experience, you'll be able to. Uh, let's have a look. Het Exantic VPI. Well, what do you think the chances are now, um, Adam, of us hitting a visual VPI Exantic clown, given those? 100%. Uh, do you reckon it's 100%? Well, no, because the het's a het. And then you've got, I think that that's a het clown as well. We need to change that to het clown. Then we can reflect what Jad bought me for Christmas, which is there. So 50 50. So if we have two double hats, I think it's one out of eight is what I'm guess, guessing, calculate it. So still shooting for that. And let's have a look at the percentages. So 
we've got a 116 chance of just having a normal. We've got a 1 out of 8 chance of a het clown, a 1 out of 8 chance of a het exantic VPI line. We've got a 1 out of 16 chance of getting a clown, a 1 out of 16 chance of getting an exantic VPI um, visual. We've got 1 in 4 chance of a double het exantic VPI line, 1 out of 8 chances of getting an exantic VPI het clown, and a 1 out of 8 chance of getting a clown het exantic VPI. So we're probably more likely to get these two out of eight eggs, of which we can then breed those two together to improve our odds. But look, there's one out of 16 chance of getting a VPI exantic clown. So if we have an average of eight eggs in a clutch, Adam, it will take two clutches to hit what we're looking for by going for double heads. So the chances are actually quite remote. But of course, if we had 10 females, then the chances would go in our favor because the more females that are ready to go, the better. So it might be that we have to take two stages to doing this. So I think the likelihood is that we're probably going to hit an exantic visual with a het clown, and we're probably going to hit a clown with a het VPI. It's unlikely that we're going to hit that, and it's unlikely that we're going to hit that. So let's now change the odds in our favour. Let's say second year we've managed to produce one of these that is a clown. And let's see how the odds improve on the second season of breeding the next generation. And let's say that on this one, we've now got a uh, exantic VPI line. Let's change that up. VPI, so we've got a visual with a het clown, and we've got a visual clown with a het VPI exantic. Now, what do you think the odds are gonna go in our favor, Adam? Still shooting for this animal. And then what are the chances? Should we have a quick look? So there we go. We get a one out of four chance. <laughs> so the odds improve in our favor. That's really the ideal scenario. One out of four would be VPI Exantic. So in a clutch of eight, you'd expect two. You would end up with a clown het VPI and an Exantic het clown, one in four. And you expect one out of four of them to be double hets. So that's what we'll probably have to do is some, um, to improve our odds, we'll probably look at um, in plugging in these two at a second um, project, which is probably two or three years down the line once we've produced our first project. So. That's one way of improving the odds. The other way of doing it, of course, is to buy a visual um, clown. Let's see what we would do now to improve the odds. And now we're going to put in a clown and an and a exantic visual. Let's make sure I get my spellings right. And let's see how that improves the odds. Calculate that. So that's what we're shooting for. And now you've got a 50-50 chance of getting a VPI exantic clown and a 50-50 chance of getting a VPI het clown. So by having one stud male, which I think that's about 3,000 um, bucks, you can then up your odds. Now we could go on to Morph Market here. Let's add a, open up a new tab. Let's go Morph Market and just see um, what's available and how much they go for. So let's click on that. So you can see we've got quite fast internet here with our new super highway that's come in. And it gives you a list of all the genetics, and we can either browse for the latest editions, or we can literally pick a gene. Now, I think we were looking for the VPI exantic clowns. So let's see where we've got there. There's 24, or there's 26 available. Let's see if we can find a VPI exantic clown that's available. Just scrolling through. So you can see a VPI Exantic Pied Bull, you're looking at 1,700 euros. No, we don't want that. Let's see if we can find a 3,000 for an, a mil cinnamon VPI. Let's just go through and see what's available. I mean, we can be specific, we can filter here. So if instead of scrolling through, the filter allows you to go in and select the sex, the age, the weight, the diet it's taking. Now the trait counts, you can count anything from zero to nine traits. Why don't we put in clown as a second trait here? And then if we go for that, anything the price is from zero to 100,000 euros. And then you're allowed to look at location, different countries, lots of different filters, price availability for sale. Let's just go and see what it does. Will there be any available? We found one. <laughs> it's just been sold for two and a half thousand euros so that's the price you pay for one of these and it's gone and let's have a look at it and see what we have so this is from uh, Roma uh, Lazio 
and the breeder was uh, Luca Di Simone, Dreaming Bull Pythons. He just sold that for two and a half thousand as a 600 gram male. So that's a breedable, almost breedable male. Beautiful animal. Let's have a click on him and have a look at him. There we go. So they do come up for now and again, but you can see there's only one there. Now we could also go to the US market and see if there's anything available in the US market. But you can see that that's the price you're going to pay, two and a half thousand euros for a male that's really up for speed. Now we can also go up here and change at the top. You've got the European, United States, South Africa. There's three separate markets that you can look at. Let's see if the US has anything. So we're moving to the US market and let us, um, it's computer's just trying to search for the details. It's just on there now. And then it should start to move us through. And let's have a look and see if we go to filters now, options. And we type in what we want, which was a uh, exantic BPLA that we want, and we want a clown. Let's see if there's anything available in the US, and see what kind of price they are going for, and see if there's any at all. There may not be any at all. Oh, there is one. Yep, there we go. A pastel VPI exantic clown is 6,000 euros, and there you go. That's the kind of money you'd pay for one extra gene in there. That's some serious buckage. And that one's, um, let's have a little look. Offers will consider. So you can see that you're looking at nearly 6,000 euros for that one extra gene if you go in the US. So I think the 2,500 euros in Italy was a good price, personally. So you can see what's there. So there are some availabilities. Let's have another look and see. What else we've got here? VPI Exantic Spider Clown. So if you put spider, which I love, into there, let's have a look and see what that looks like. What do you think, Alan? Uh, Pretty? Mm -hmm. And what kind of price? That's $5,000, 260 grams, so quite a baby hatchling. Very pretty looking snake. And let's have another look. You've got a VPI Exantic Spinner Clown. So that's going to be 6,000 euros. And in there, you're going to get Pinstripe and Spider going into two genes on top of the two recessives. So you've got the Pinstripe and the Spider. Pretty looking animal again. Looking at €6,000 uh, there. So if you do go um, for the visual on the male, and that was a female, the male comes in at 55 So the females are going for an extra 10% based on that. So you're looking at about £5,500 for the opportunity there. Let's see what else they've got. Exantic clowns are going for four and a half thousand euros. They are beautiful. There seems to be a lot more in the US than there, in, there is in Europe. And look at that, Adam, isn't that beautiful? The bumblebee VPI Exantic looks beautiful. Let's have a little look at that. So in there you've got a pastel spider. Very, very pretty. And they want 7,250 euros for that. And there's some big prices being required here to get into these big projects. So I think we'll um, leave it there, Adam, for now. Thank you for helping us with this uh, technical side. So now we're going to um, use this in our videos. And thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this technical video. It's a bit of a trial run. Put some comments down if you'd like us to improve it in any way and what you'd like us to look at. If there's any morphs or any projects, we'll do a little bit of research for you and put out a video to guide you on your projects. But we all wish you a very happy 2021. So it's goodbye from me, Paul, and goodbye from Adam. See ya. And goodbye from New Forest Morphs. Goodbye for now.